You've probably seen how to create Azure resources using the Azure portal, but that's a manual process and it's easily screw upable when you need to create and repeat the resource creation for multiple projects or when you're moving from dev to production or when you're deploying your uh, customer solution um, to their Azure subscription from your developer subscription. Wouldn't it be better to script the resource creation and configuration process to ensure that it's the same every single time? What about versioning your resource configuration so it's part of your code? You can with Infrastructure as Code or IAC. IAC is popular in the DevOps world and it fits nicely alongside a complete CI and CD process. It involves creating your resources from machine readable files that can be versioned with your project in your source control solution. In this video, I'm going to start with a blank slate and I'm going to show you how to use BICEP, a domain specific language from Microsoft, to create Azure resources for an Azure Function app. This episode is also available as a blog post on Voitanos.io and as a podcast on Voitanos.show. Check out the description below the video for links to these other resources. Hi, I'm Andrew, and if you're new here, subscribe to my channel to get notified of future videos for professional developers on Microsoft 365 and Azure topics. Let's start with the question, what is BICEP? But first, let's talk about ARM. You might be familiar with something called the Azure Resource Manager, which is also known as ARM. ARM templates are big JSON documents that you can use to deploy Azure resources. And they also have the ability to accept parameters or inputs so that you can create variables for things like resource names, settings, different SKUs, IP addresses, and domain names, just to name a few things. But they aren't terribly friendly to work with because they're huge. So Microsoft set out to simplify the challenges with ARM templates, and they wanted to create something that had a concise syntax, reliable type safety, and support for code re reuse. That's what BICEP is. It's a domain-specific language, or a DSL, that provides a much richer and more productive environment than what we get with ARM. In fact, you can compile a BICEP file down to an ARM template and vice versa. Now, BICEP has a ton of benefits, and Microsoft touts that BICEP has support for all resource types and API versions. It's also got a simple syntax, especially when you compare it to those ARM JSON templates, a better authoring experience thanks to a VS Code extension that gives us type safety, IntelliSense, syntax validation, and a bunch of other stuff. The result of a deployment to Azure with BICEP is repeatable, giving you confidence in your CI and CD process. You don't have to worry about the ordering complexities of resource creation. You simply deploy with one command and Azure takes care of all that stuff for you. And it's also very modular so that you can break it up into different components that we call modules in BICEP. You can even preview what's going to happen to your deployment with the what if operation. You can see what's gonna be created, deleted, or updated, and any of the properties that are gonna be changed as well with that operation. And best of all, BICEP is included with Azure. You don't pay a thing and it's fully supported by Microsoft support. Okay, now that's your BICEP overview firehose sales pitch. So brass tacks, let's see it. Let's look at a common scenario. Let's say that you wanna create an Azure Function app. Now, this is a simple process using the Azure portal. The wizard that you're gonna go through in creating it is collecting enough information on creating the resource. Let's see that. What I'm gonna do is come over here to my Azure portal and go to portal.azure.com and I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. So here I'm in my Azure subscription and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new resource or say I wanna create, um, create a new resource. So I'm gonna start by creating a new resource group and we'll just call this our Playground01. And I'm gonna put this in my East US and just say review and create it. So our resource group is now created. Let's go see what it looks like to create our Azure uh, function app and see what the process looks like. So I'm gonna go say create, and I'm gonna search for a function app. And I'll say create. Now, from here, it's gonna ask me a bunch of questions. So where do I wanna put this? I'm gonna put it in the existing resource group that we just created, Playground 1. Now, let's give it a name. I'll just call this my Playground function app. Doesn't like that, so how about 01? There we go, 01. Um, I'm going to be publishing things as code. Uh, let's see the runtime stack. We're going to use Node. Um, that, this doesn't really matter at this time. Uh, the version LTS is good. Uh, we're going to deploy this to East US. Um, I like Linux. 
and we'll just say it's a premium plan just for kicks. Um, it's going to ask me what kind of a premium plan I want to use here. So it's given me an option uh, for creating my um, hosting plan of where my Azure Function app is going to run. So it's creating one called ASP Playground 01 with uh, four characters after it. And it's chosen the Elastic Premium 1 EP1 um, SKU in size. Uh, it's going to ask me about zone redundancy. I don't really care about that right now. Um, hosting, it needs a storage account. That's interesting. So that one's called Playground 01 BE44. Um, and let's go to networking. I'm not going to deal with any of the networking stuff right now. For monitoring, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use Azure Application Insights because that's going to hook up to my function app to let me see how the function app is performing, both from the resource side, but then I can also use that inside of my, uh, my functions as well. And I'll just go ahead and I'll just say create. So it'll go to a review and then I say create. And I'm going to let this go ahead and create our resources. All right, so what did that process create? Well, it created a storage account an app service plan or a hosting plan where everything is going to run and it created our function app as well. It also created an instance of application insights that we're going to use to monitor the function app and it connected it to the function app uh, to the app insights instance. And we can see that if we come over here to our function app and we look at the configuration for our production deployment slot and what you're going to see here are a bunch of app settings and you can see some of the app settings for application insights. We also have an app setting for the storage account that was created, the web storage, the web jobs storage. Some details about the function as well, like what's the extension version we're using in the runtime. And then also some website content um, settings as well that have been set. Not only this, maybe you also want to create some additional deployment slots for your function app. Um, that's something you definitely could do. Well, let's see how we can do all of this with Bicep. Now, in another video, uh, this one up here, that I'm also going to link to in the description below the video, I'm going to show you how I'm using this Bicep file that we're about to create in a GitHub workflow for a complete CI and CD process. This video that you're watching right now, we're just going to focus on the Bicep part. So first, let's make sure that my environment is all set up. Now, there's nothing I need to do with Azure, but I do need to make sure that I've got some stuff that I've done to my laptop to be able to use Bicep uh, and create the Bicep templates and test them out. Now, to create a, a deployment with your Bicep file, I'm gonna use the Azure CLI, and I guess you could use PowerShell, but I'm a CLI person, so I'm just gonna use the CLI. Now, I already have the Azure CLI installed on my laptop, so I'm gonna drop a link to it in the description below, just in case that you need it and you haven't installed it. Now, Bicep is provided as an extension to the CLI. So first, let's see if it's installed. I'm going to use the terminal that's in VS Code because we're going to use VS Code to create our Bicep file. So we're just going to use the terminal because it'll be easier to see both of them at the same time. So I'm going to do this by saying AZ Bicep version. And what that's going to do is that's going to use the Azure CLI to see if Bicep is already installed. And here you can see it's not installed. So it tells me how to install it by just saying AZ Bicep install. Now let's make sure it's installed by saying AZ Bicep version, and it should come back and give us some information about the extension that's installed. Okay, cool. So that's good. We can even ask it what things can we do with this by doing the help command. Okay, so Bicep is now installed inside of the Azure CLI. Now, I also need to make sure that I'm logged into Azure with the CLI and I set the CLI to the Azure subscription where I want to create all these resources. So to set the subscription, I'm going to run AZ account list to get a list of all the subscriptions for my account that I have access to. Um, and then I'm going to set which one I want to use using the AZ account set uh, and then use the subscription argument. And then to confirm that I have the subscription set on the CLI that I want to use, I can just see AZ account show. And that confirms that I'm actually using or I've set to use the subscription that I want to use here. Now let's make sure that Visual Studio Code has the Bicep extension installed. And I'm going to include a link to this in the description below to make sure that you can find it easily. Um, my machine definitely does because I can just say Bicep. And I can see that the uh, extension is already installed. And so with that, my laptop is good to go. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to create a resource group where I want to put everything. 
So I can do that using the Azure CLI as well. Now I'm gonna store the name of my resource group in a variable called resource group, and I'm gonna use that to create the resource using the Azure CLI by typing in AZ group create, pass in the name of the resource group, the location where I want the resource group to be defaulted to, and then I'm just gonna set a tag on it as well. And now to confirm that resource group was created, I'll just come back over here to the Azure portal. I can do a refresh for my subscription. And here we can see we have Playground 2 set up. Okay, with everything set up, let's get started creating our bicep file. So when you do this, you wanna think about your dependency tree like as a mental map. Like I'm creating a function app, but that needs a hosting plan, so I should create that first. And then my function app's gonna need a storage account to store logs and some other things. So I probably need to create that as well before I create the function app. You get the picture. Let's start by creating the basics of our bicep file. Now, I'm gonna start with what I want for my inputs known to be as parameters to be. And these are gonna enable my bicep file to be reusable across different projects. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create a parameter called location, and it's gonna to default to the location of the resource group that we're currently in, where we're defining this. You're gonna see in a little bit, when I run my bicep file, I'm gonna tell it what resource group to create the deployment in. So when it runs, the bicep file is gonna be able to get the location of the current resource group, so all resources that are created in it, they're gonna go in East US where my resource group is. I'm then gonna create a resource name prefix um, parameter that I can pass in, or I should pass in. And what I'm doing with this is I want every single resource that I create in my Azure function to have the same prefix on their name. I'm gonna standardize the suffix to be whatever I want inside of my bicep file. Um, here you can see I'm also setting the description of it so that when I use this bicep file, I can get IntelliSense if another bicep file is gonna call it. Um, the next thing is I'm gonna define the deployment ID. I'm giving it a default value of a bunch of zeros. But in the other video where I'm gonna talk about using um, uh, GitHub Actions for deployment, you'll see why I like to go through and set the deployment ID um, as well. And then finally, I'm gonna define the name of the staging slot that I wanna create for my function app. And in my case, I'm gonna default that to staging. So now let's create that storage account that we're gonna need. Now to create the resource, I'm gonna use the keyword resource and give it a name. I'm just gonna call this my AZ storage account. That's an internal variable for my bicep file that I can use in other places. I'm gonna use the resource called microsoft.storage slash storage accounts, and then I specify what API I wanna use. Now when I create this, I'm gonna pass in a bunch of properties, and I do that using a similar uh, syntax to what we have in JSON, where I'm setting an object with a bunch of properties. I'm gonna set the name to be whatever the prefix is, with storage on the end. I'm gonna set the location equal to the location of our resource group, which we defined in our parameter at the top. I'm gonna to set the kind of our resource to storage v2. And then I'm gonna set the SKU to be standard locally redundant storage. Um, so I'm not gonna do any kind of like globally redundant stuff in this demo here. When we create the function app, one of its app settings needs the connection string for the storage account. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable and I'm gonna use the first keys bicep function to get the primary and the secondary keys from the storage account. The primary key is the first one in the array that's returned. So I'm gonna go ahead and stuff that into this variable. Notice that as I'm typing some of these things in, I'm getting some IntelliSense and that's the benefit of using something like bicep over using ARM templates. Because we're getting this IntelliSense and part of it's being provided to me as well through the VS Code extension uh, for Bicep. You'll also notice that I'm getting these little squigglies or little warnings here and it's saying that, hey, you've defined this variable but you're never using it. So you might have picked up on that as, as I'm typing certain things like this environment name prefix. When I use this, to create the string interpolation uh, to basically concatenate two strings together. Um, I was, that it was showing up as not being used up on line five, but now that I'm using it, it's actually working. Next, let's create the App Insights instance. To do this, I'm gonna create a new resource named AZ App Insights, and I'm gonna use the resource called Microsoft.insights slash components, and then pick the um, API I wanna use, the API version. I'm gonna set the, the name of the App Insights instance to wherever my prefix is, dash AI. I'm gonna set the location to East US using the same location property. The kind is set to web, and then I'm gonna set some other properties on this, like the application type, the public network access for ingestion and for query. 
Um, I'm setting all these different values. These are all, all these different options are defined not only on the resource itself, but it's also defined in the bicep documentation, uh, the type for all the different types that are available. You can use any of the stuff that you have with ARM in bicep files um, for those different property values. Um, remember, bicep is kind of just a DSL on top of ARM templates. Now, similar to creating that storage account, I'm gonna need the App Insights instrumentation key for the function app when I create it. So I'm gonna stuff that in a variable as well right now. All right, now for the main event. Now let's create the function app. But first, I need to create a Azure hosting plan where it's gonna be stored. To do that, I'm gonna create a resource. We're gonna stuff it in a variable called AZ hosting plan. And I'm gonna use the resource microsoft.web slash server farms. I'm gonna set the name, the location, and the kind uh, to use the similar values I've already used so far. The kind you notice, I'm gonna set that to Linux. For the SKU, I'm gonna use an S1 SKU. And for the properties, I'm gonna set it to be uh, reserved. Oh, there's something I wanna show you. So before we move on, so check this out. The VS Code bicep extension can show you a visualization of all the resources that you're creating. Cool, right? What's cool about this is I can even click to one, on one of these resources and it'll take me straight to the actual resource that I've created. So you can see I'm jumping around here. So that might not be too exciting, but watch this. Remember our function app? That's gonna have to have a dependency on the hosting plan. Let's create the function app now. So to do that, we're gonna create a new resource called AZ function app. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the resource called or named microsoft.web slash sites. I'm gonna set the name. I'm gonna set the kind, it's gonna be a function app, the location and the identity for this one, we're gonna use a system assigned identity. So we could use like managed identity. Um, you'll see in the other video that I'm gonna talk about later, or that I'll, I'll show you, I use this in, um, with my full uh, CI and CD process with the GitHub uh, workflow. Um, you'll see where that's coming into play. Now for the properties, as I set these properties, watch the visualization over there on the right hand side. Um, as I finish all these properties up and how I'm I'm linking the server farm ID to the hosting uh, plan that we just created his ID. Now function apps, just like web apps in Azure can have deployment slots that are depending on the hosting plan that you selected. I love using these. And in my other video that is going to, that I'm going to show you how I use GitHub um, uh, workflows to do full CI and CD of an Azure function that's going to use this bicep file. I'm going to show you how I use them with my Azure functions for a completely automated CI and CD process that includes swapping the two deployment slots uh, when I want that to happen. But I need the slots first. So I've already got one slot. Um, by default, because when we create the function app, it automatically created that, but I need a staging slot. So let's go about creating that now. Now to create a staging slot, I'm gonna use the same resource keyword and call it the AZ function slot staging. And then the name of the resource I'm gonna use is the microsoft.web slash sites slash slots. I'm then gonna set the name, the location, the identity and the properties to be very similar to the ones we have for the function app, but you'll notice the name looks a little bit different because it's going to be the name of the function app that we created previously. And then I'm going to add on after a slash, the name of the staging slot that we passed in as one of our input parameters. But wait a minute, did we forget something? A function app needs some application settings that are defined when it's created, right? We saw that in when I created it using the portal. And that's how App Insights is gonna get wired up along with a few other things like the supported functions runtime and a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, I didn't forget anything. Instead, I created the resources like this very intentionally. Here's what's going on. I want the slots in my function app to have mostly all the same app settings across both of the different slots, except for one property. I want that to be slot specific. And that means I don't want it to change when I swap the different slots. I want it to stay with that slot, even though the code base is gonna change. So in the Azure portal, I usually do this by checking a box on the slot uh, property. But when I provision it with the resource manager, you first have to tell the function app that one setting is slot specific. And then you have to go set all the app settings on each slot independently. So here's how we're gonna do this. 
First, I'm gonna tell a function app that it has one specific setting that slot, that slot specific. And I'm gonna do this with a Microsoft.web slash sites slash config resource. And I'm gonna set its name to slot config names. Then I'm gonna list the, all the app settings that I want to be slot specific to be the um, app settings names property. And then lastly, I need to set the app settings on both slots, but I'm gonna do this with a special capability we have in Bicep called a module. Let's create a new Bicep file that we're gonna to use to set our app settings on the slots. Now I need a few input parameters like the App Insights instrumentation key, the storage accounts details, uh, the function name and the staging slot name. So let me go ahead and add these. Now I'm also gonna create a parameter with the default value that I want for that slot specific app setting. Now, because both of the slots app settings mostly mirror each other, except for that one property, I'm gonna create a common variable called the base slot app setting that contains all the settings that are shared by both slots. And I'm gonna use string interpolation to not just create these name value pairs, but also concatenate a few strings uh, for the different values of these different um, settings. So they're all in the name value pair uh, setup. Now, let's set the production slot settings. Now I'm gonna do that by creating a new variable with just the value for the production slot. And I'm then gonna set the value using the same microsoft.web slash site slash config resource and I'm gonna set the name of the function app slash app settings, all right? That's how it's gonna set those app settings. And the value of the properties that I'm gonna set, well, I'm gonna use this, um, the bicep union function to merge the base settings and the production settings together. And they're gonna repeat the process for the staging slot, but instead, I'm gonna use the resource microsoft.web slash sites slash slots slash config. And I'm gonna use the name of the staging slot to specify these different settings. Now to call this module, let's jump back to my main bicep file. And I'm gonna use the module keyword to call my module. And I'm gonna give it a specific name, unique to the deployment. And then you're gonna see why I'm gonna do that in a few minutes when we actually do the deployment. To set the input parameters, I'll just set those using the params property on the object that I'm creating. Notice that you saw in the visualization, it created the app service uh, module that I was creating or the, 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 name, the module that I created. And then once I referenced the file, it actually looked inside that module and it showed me the resources that were being created, which were the two functions uh, slot settings. Also notice that I'm using the variables that I created previously to pass them in as parameters to get things like the app insights instrumentation key and the storage account access key. And notice that this module, as I'm giving it these different references, it's picking up dependencies on some of the other objects and resources that I've already created in this bicep file. Now the last step is to update the output settings. This isn't really necessary, but you're gonna see why I do this in the other video where I use this bicep file in my CI and CD process for my GitHub uh, workflow. Now, let's look at that visualization. I'm gonna go full screen. Notice how we can see our nested module in our main bicep visualization. This is really cool. We can use this module on its own too if we wanted in a totally different bicep uh, file, or we could just use it straight from the Azure CLI. Let's see if this works. I'm gonna go back to the console and I'm gonna use the Azure CLI to create a brand new deployment. I'm gonna do that by typing in AZ deployment group create. I'm gonna give the deployment a name. I'll call it my deploy one. I'm gonna tell it what resource group where I want to create this deployment. So in this case here, I'm gonna use the same variable I used earlier. I'm gonna then specify the bicep file that we're gonna use. And then I'm also gonna pass in a couple parameters. Remember that we had a few input parameters on our bicep file, like the deployment name ID. We're gonna call that my deploy 1.1 1 .1 or 1-1. And then I'm also gonna set the resource name prefix. And I'm gonna use the prefix name Zara. And I can see we got an error here. So let's take a look at this and we see there's a reference to a staging slot line 99. So this is a little confusing because unfortunately what we're seeing here is the error is coming from the JSON file that was uh, generated. 
So I have to kind of use this to figure out where the problem is. And I can see that because it's talking about a function staging um, slot, that it's probably going to be when I'm creating the staging slot. And sure enough, I can see the problem because I'm passing in a resource here when it really wanted to pass in the name. Now, it took a second to get started, but that's a good sign because it likely means that my bicep file is valid, unlike the couple little typos that you saw me have um, earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over to the Azure portal and I'm going to go into the resource group that we created, our Playground 2. And I'm going to go over here to our deployments and see what deployments we have. And we can see there's the deployment. It's starting to run right here. Now, let's see everything that got created. So if I go look at my deployment, we see one was called My Deploy. And we can see all the stuff that it did. These are all the things that it created or our work that it ended up doing here. We see storage listed twice. That doesn't mean it was created twice. It just meant that it was created and there maybe was an update to it somewhere along the way. Um, we can also see that it actually ran another deployment inside of it. We can see that this one's listed as a deployment and see where it's called My Deploy 1-1 Grant App Service. This is the deployment that we use to create our, our module. So when our main.bicep called our other module that was setting the app settings, those are seen as two different deployments. And that's why I like to use that deployment ID. I give it a name because I use that as kind of like the prefix. So when I look at all of the deployments uh, for this for this resource group, I can tell that, that this deployment was tied to this one. And what's also cool about this is that when I look at the deployment, I can also look at what the template looked like. So here's the JSON template that was created uh, from our bicep file. We can also look at the variables that were defined and the parameters that were all passed in. But I can also look, give it a little bit easier to see, I can look at the inputs for this deployment. So there's the location uh, for our resource group. There's the resource name prefix. There's the deployment name ID and the function app staging slot. And I can see the outputs that were returned back to me. So that's why I said I don't. you don't really need to do the outputs, but it's kind of nice so where you can go back and see like, hey, what did you create, app, an App Insights instance? What's that instrumentation key? If I come back over here to the resource now, and if I go to the overview, here I can see all of my resources are all created. We've got our Azure Function app. we got a staging slot. There's our hosting plan, and there's App Insights. If I come to my Azure Function app, and I look at the deployment slots, I can see that we have two slots that are created. If I look at the production uh, slots configuration, which is what we're on right now, and I show all the values, you can see there's our instrumentation key, there's our storage account, connection string, and all those are the values that we set. Notice here that the app configuration level is set to be a deployment slot setting, and the value is set to production. If I jump over to my staging slot, and I look at the staging slot, and pick his configuration, here you'll see, after showing the values, He's got all the same values except for that one that's set up as a um, as just a slot specific uh, setting. So this is really cool. We can see all these values that were set, and sure enough, we could even see look at that one deployment that we created that can for our um, app settings or for the settings we set for each one of the slots, and we can see all the inputs that were passed into it. So like the staging slot name was named this, the function app name was named this, etc. So it's really cool. We can see all that stuff that's all defined. Bicep's pretty cool, as I now have a file that defines the function app and all of its dependencies. And one thing that I love about this infrastructure as code stuff is that not only do I have a file that I can use to recreate and make changes to my app, but my changes can be versioned and documented with the, my project. Um, and that's going to act as like documentation for whatever my project needs. So what do you think? Let me know by dropping a comment below and let me know if you want to see more videos about Bicep or Azure Functions or doing Azure Functions CI and CD stuff. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing by smashing that big red subscribe button below. That way you're going to see when I publish more videos on similar topics uh, for professional developers, specifically around Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure, including topics on Bicep and Azure Functions. Hey, and don't forget to check out that other video where I show you how to use this Bicep file in a complete CI and CD process, and that uses this file to not only create the resources in a GitHub workflow, but only if all of my tests pass. Once the Azure resources are provisioned, the workflow then deploys my app into the resources that it created.
Thanks, and I'll see you next time.